pleased to say that today I'm going to teach you the final song off of Escape Babylon on lead guitar. And uh, this song was originally uh, going to be acoustic, and it was called Wool um, in its initial form. And I ended up, wanna, just at the last minute, I recorded a full band version and really liked it. I thought it fit really well on the record. And so at the last minute, I swapped out uh, wool with what I'm deeming now as steel wool, which is the version I'll be teaching you today. Um, and then wool ended up on Singularity as a, as a track. So this song is kind of a unique song. It's in standard tuning, and it's got some odd chords and whatnot, but I just wanted to kind of lay down the basis of the song for you. So the verses of the song, which are also contain the quote unquote lead hook for the song that you'll be playing over them. These are only two chords in the whole progression for the verses. So it goes like this. So that's it. That's that's what I'm doing basically on all the verses and on the parts that are these main lead hooks that you play, which are based off of the keyboard line in the, the song. So I guess we'll start real quick with the lead hook slash keyboard line in the wool version. Okay, so what you're going to be playing uh, from the get-go of the song, you come in with the band over my verse chords before I start singing, and you will play this line. That line right there. You only play it one time through before the first verse and then once before the second verse. So we'll do it one more time real slow and then I'll break down what strings and frets and fingers I'm using. So that's the line. Uh, we'll break it down finger by finger, string by string, fret by fret. So what you'll do is you will start with your ring finger on the fifth fret of the high E string. Then you'll move to your pointer finger on the third fret of the B string. Then the ring finger will go to the fifth fret of the B string. Then your pinky finger will end up on the sixth fret of the B string. And then your pointer finger will end up on the second fret of the B string. And then your middle finger will end up on the third fret of the high E string. While your pinky will then move up to the fifth fret of the G string. And your middle finger will end up on the third fret of the B string. And your pinky finger will then go to the fifth fret of the B string. And then you will land with your pointer finger on the final note which will be on the second fret of the G string. So that is your entire lead hook. I can play it one more time for you. There you go. That is the lead hook 
for steel wool. I should also mention that the lead hook, which is based off of the keyboard line, as I've said before, in the original version of wool, that happens twice in the song. And it will happen the first time before the first verse starts from the zero point in the song till 15 seconds in the song. And then it will happen a second time after the first chorus and before the second verse begins at a minute and nine seconds. And then we'll go till a minute and 24 seconds. Now we will move on to what the lead guitar does on the verses of this song. So the verse is criminally easy. Um, the verse, you just kind of chill, I think, the first two times through while I'm singing uh, with those chords strumming. So I'll be like... Then you come in right there. And so your line is really easy. It's like. And that's it. That's all you play. So, so easy. Like one of the easiest little parts on the whole record uh, is that part. So one more time, I'll play it slow and then we'll we'll dissect the actual frets and fingers and strings and all that. There you go. So, you will start with your pointer finger on the fifth fret of the B string, and it will slide over to the sixth fret of the B string right there and then you will hit your pinky on the eighth fret of the high E string like so boom so that's the first position and then there's one more position it's it's basically the same thing however you move your pinky over or up one half step uh, one fret over so your pointer is still on the fifth fret of the B string, starting off, and then slides over to the sixth fret again of the B string, like you did before. And then your pinky now, instead of being on the eighth fret, is on the ninth fret of the high E string. So. So all you do is you switch between one, two, three, four. That's all you're playing on both verses of the song. Um, this part happens, uh, like I said, twice, because uh, there's two verses. The first time it will happen at 26 seconds in the song, and we'll go till... 38 seconds in the song. And then on the second verse, it will come in at a minute and 36 seconds in the song and go to a minute and 48 seconds in the song. So let's just play it one more time real slow and then we'll move on to the chorus of the song. Let's go ahead and move on to the chorus. All 
now we are going to break into the chorus of the song. There are three choruses in this song, and uh, as I had shown you before, the verse parts and lead hook parts are just two chords. After the verse ends, after that ends, then I go into this progression for the choruses. That's your chorus, basically, uh, what I'm playing on the chorus. What you will be doing is a lot easier, I think. Well, it's debatable. You have two different things going on on the choruses. Um, the basic thing that you'll be playing until I hit that last chord where I go... Until I hit that, uh, that's you're going to be doing an octave bend over that, which will tackle after this part. The first part of the song, what you're going to be doing on the main parts of the chorus before it ends on that last chord, however, is a very simple picking part. Uh, it's just a triad, two triad chords going over everything. And uh, the first one is this. And the second one is... It's the same exact positioning. I don't move my fingers as far as the position. Um, they're just on different frets. So you'll go like this. When it kicks in with the first chords and I start singing, thought I could pull the wool over your eyes, that part, you'll come in. That's basically it. You'll then hit an octave bend. That's basically all you do for the choruses. Uh, the last chorus does have a longer octave bend. I think it's double or maybe even triple the length. It's like... Like something like that. But anyway, we'll get into the octave bends after we dissect the formations for these triads. So what you'll be playing on these lead picking parts is you will be putting your pinky finger on the 14th fret of the G string. Your pointer finger will be placed on the 11th fret of the B string and your ring finger will be on the 13th fret of the high E string. And then what you will, your picking pattern for that will be just like that. And you'll do the same thing after you pick through twice of that, you'll go move yourself down so that your pinky finger is on the ninth fret of the G string. And then your pointer finger is on the sixth fret of the B string. And your ring finger is on the eighth fret of the high E string. So, so you then do the same picking pattern exactly. Boom, just like that. So,
And then that's it until you go into your octave bends. And so that basically plays through those two triads four times back and forth. Um, I guess that'd be eight different positionings, but going back and forth four times between the two positionings. And then we land on the octave bend uh, right here and you'll go boom, just like that. And uh, once again, we'll slow it down. So your pointer finger will be placed on the 10th fret of the high E string. And then your pinky finger will be placed on the 14th fret of the B string, like that. And it gives you that dissonance there. And you then, it's kind of like, a, it's an octave bend, so you just really bend the pinky finger up till it reaches unison. Just like that. So that is it for that part right there. That would conclude both parts of the chorus. Um, I just want to go ahead and note where these parts happen. So the first chorus hits at 39 seconds in the song and goes to a minute and five seconds in the song with the picking part. And then that octave bend happens for the first time at a minute and six seconds in the song and goes to a minute and eight seconds in the song. Then the second chorus starts with the triads at a minute and 49 seconds and goes till two minutes and 15 seconds. Then you will conclude that second chorus with, again, the octave bends at two minutes and 16 seconds till two minutes and 18 seconds. And then the third and final chorus hits uh, with the picking triads at 3 minutes and 12 seconds and goes until 3 minutes and 37 seconds, followed by your final, I believe, doubled set of octave bends. You'll be doing it double in duration of what you have been the entire time of the song. That will hit at 3 minutes and 38 seconds, until the very end of the song. So now that we have that covered, we are now going to move on to the final segment of the song, which is the bridge. To tackle the bridge of steel wool which is the final part of the tutorial um, so I just want to say in the original version of wool that's acoustic with percussion and keys and all kinds of crazy harmonies um, that version I will just play the chords to the bridge it's really only three chords um, it's after your octave bend part um, coming out of the second chorus and I just kind of come in
this part is different on the electric version. My pattern changes after the the, the initial strums. We come in with more of this kind of hard hardcore um, palm muting thing going on. through that three times so the initial time that those chords come in is just ring rings out one time through and then it goes to the progression three times kind of metally call muting so this part is just octaves so it's pretty simple it's pretty much the same pattern with a couple little variations uh, I think there's one variation the third time through but let's just go ahead and tackle this first part and then we'll get to the uh, the chugging <laughs> Part. So when I come in with those those one strums, you go like this over me. It's really just those four um, positions of octaves. You'll be playing on the A string and on the G string with your pointer and your ring finger. So uh, it, it will pretty much follow this for the other parts as well. But let me just go ahead and break down position one here. Your pointer finger will be on the seventh fret of the A string and your ring finger will be on the ninth fret of the G string. There's octave one. Then you will move downward uh, to the third fret of the A string with your pointer finger and the fifth fret of the G string with your ring finger. And that's your second octave position. And then you'll move up the neck to the tenth fret of the A string with your pointer finger and your ring finger will then be on the 12th fret of the G string. And that is your third octave position. And then finally, you'll move up one full step so that your pointer finger is on the 12th fret of the A string and your ring finger is on the 14th fret of the G string. And that is your fourth octave position. Now, there are four four parts of this. So the first time through that I just showed you, you're just going to go. And then what you'll do is you'll be doing like 16th note uh, strumming. And you'll be doing the same exact, well, a, a very similar pattern. However, you'll be you'll you'll be going one two three, then back to one, then and then to four. Instead of going one two three four in that exact order, you'll be going back to one after the third position, and then then to four. So it goes. <laughs> That is how it works. One, two, three, one, four. So that's what you're doing on the second time through. And you'll also do this on the fourth time through. But it changes very minimally here just with a fifth octave thrown in 
on the third time through. So like the first time you're just strumming through the pattern, uh, holding, letting it ring out. Then the second time you do what I just did. And then the fourth time you do what I just did with the 16th note strumming. The third time that you will come in, you will go like this. You will go from the first position. <laughs> end up all the way up in this fifth position with your pointer finger on the 16th fret of the A string and your ring finger on the 18th fret of the G string. So that is the progression. So we'll try to go, I'll just, instead of do them in 16th notes, we'll just kind of strum through them. So the first time through is... And then 16th notes from this point on, but I'm just going to do one strums to make it easier. We're in the final one now. And you end on the fourth one. With that fourth progression, you'll end on the fourth position, like you did on the second one, uh, identical to the second time through. So I know it's a slight variation. I wish I had stems. I apologize for the fact that I do not have stems for this. But that should about wrap up the uh, bridge octaves um, those go from two minutes and 19 seconds in the song until three minutes and 11 seconds in the song in total i hope that you can dissect through it and um, if you have any questions feel free to email me or or whatever check the site for some other references but uh yeah i will probably be posting some other tutorials later for some of the singularity tracks um because I think that we will want to play maybe a, a couple songs off Singularity at some point. And then there is a B-side from the record that I may do a tutorial for called Second Second Coming, but not terribly concerned about playing that one live. So um, anyway, we've gotten through 13 tutorials thus far, and I feel very accomplished. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to learn Steel Wool and all the other songs off Escape Babylon, and uh, I appreciate you.